right, with uh, our guest Brenner here. Who knows who are with us to this point? Dr. Patrick. Yay! Share a little bit. How you how you 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 feel that hey this is this initiative is training is <laughs> okay selamat pagi murid murid sebab cikgu besar ada sini okay uh, good morning to all this is an attempt as we when we started off uh, many of our staff meetings we said we are also a learning community we are not just here to finish deadlines. So you have to do your lapora and you have to do your project, you are doing something. But we wanted to understand what we are doing and how we are doing. Now, Dr. Patiban is from USM, uh, has been there lecturing for, I think, what, 20, 30 yeah, years? 20, 20, 20. Yes. Uh, he told me he met me many, many years ago uh, when he had no white beard. <laughs> but uh, but so but it's a long time, <clears throat> and recently James and I met him in uh, Ipo, where the city hall is doing a study on poverty, urban poverty, urban issues of the city. So he is one of the resource persons, and James and I was the other. Panir, were you there? As well? No. So that meeting, and while we were in the discussion, uh, Dr. Patiban talked a lot about the development agenda, pembangunan. What does it mean linked to SDG, multi-dimension? <laughs> so I thought it will be helpful for the staff team. And I asked all the directors, where are the directors? I see only two here. They asked them whether all their staff will be in the office. So they said, don't worry, today everybody will be in the office. Tapi, the nature of our work, James is out, uh, Rama is uh, not well at this point. Then some are going off uh, to Pontian, some are going to Kolakangsa. We got an afternoon meeting uh, online. So many busy, busy schedule. But what is important, I discussed with Dr. Patiban, we're going to make this into a three-part series. So first, you must have a book. I, very good. All this young staff baru ini already trained. Young old staff, either you have your laptop or a notebook or your handphone uh, to write your notes and things. Huh? Because I've asked Dr. Patiban to give all of you an assignment. Then we will meet online second round because today we are stopping by 12 30. then the third one might be interesting either we all go to usm uh then we found out he's yeah. from typing or go to typing to have an ongoing discussion so it's about poverty we are doing sustainable development goals so what is development what is the theory behind what are the issues and we are also looking at poverty, multidimensional. So yesterday we were in Kotobaru. And it said Kotobaru, Kvartanis are very poor. But when the Laporan we heard, it has the highest number of land ownership per family and house ownership. So Garis Miskiran, maybe they are not collecting that. It is the place where women... I didn't know this, lah. the other women here. Yeah. Women has the most number of jewelry. Even a poor woman from Ibu Tungal might wear 10,000 ringgit uh, jewelry and cup. Uh, and, and so that's a very interesting. I thought only Indian ladies wear jewelry, but uh, Klantanis women operate on jewelry and they uh, for loans and take capital and then redeem their goal and so forth. Uh, the Arano example. So Dr. Patiban will also deal with multidimensional poverty. So use his expertise. He has agreed to be our resource person. 
now he becomes like mahaguru or you know. development <laughs> for all the stuff not only new stuff but old stuff as well so don't forget the assignment so yeah. chegu will mark and grade the assignment <laughs> uh and we will have a second follow up and a third which will be coordinated by zoel my sdg academy so enjoy this uh, two and a half hour session i think the way this is arranged uh and it be more interactive uh ask questions don't worry if i'm seated here or anthony or rama is online or what uh please enjoy ask the questions Uh, learn from this experience and do our work better and our research better understand why what we are doing and what is the background to it so you might like rachel in finance so if you are joining uh, or fika or karu in admin it's as important for you as those who are researchers so let's give a hand and welcome dr patiban uh, who has taken came last night and taken actually the whole of today but we cut short to half day thank you sir no problem all right thank, thank you, you dr denison and we have seven uh, seven colleagues uh, on right. online so without further ado let's welcome dr batman for this morning session thank you like uh, sounds like celebrity eh? anyway coming back uh, prof did mention that uh, i'm mahaguru actually uh, slight correction it takes a greater guru to recognize one therefore he is maha maha guru to me but i can only a guru can recognize another oh. another person <laughs> we met i met a uh, prof when i was doing a post graduate studies on poetry itself so i always have uh, a look up on prof definitely <laughs> anyway um uh, yes coming back to this uh, today uh, we're going to look into see here i can see this the uh, aroma of sdgs everywhere right and and the word sustainable development goal you all know what is sustainable and you all know what is goal now development the development what is development actually so let us just look at you know what it is development so when we say development face value right? i may not have much time to interact but i will find time eh? room where we can interact what do you understand about development Okay. What, what is your name, by the way? My Sarah. Man, so what do you? Apa kamu faham tentang develop? Apa yang kamu faham bangunan? What do you understand? When you the first, what that first thing that comes to your mind? Negara maju. Good. What about you? Your name? Yes. Yes. What's your what's your definition of development? What did you understand? Financially stable. Good. What about you, sir? Changes. Changes. Development means changes. What about you? <laughs> better quality of life and uh, how about you madam improvement and all that stuff huh? all of you are right all of you are right but now nothing is wrong with that but we are going to look especially when you talk about academically or theoretically which is very important that that's the basis of basis of all knowledge when you have a very strong foundation of theoretical understanding when you say theoretical understanding here the word theory comes from the root word is from actually from research when you do a lot of uh, scientific research the uh, findings of that research you accumulate then it manifests as theory so it is not just from imagination eh? scientific research like some of you do so the manifestation of this theoretical basis is actually scientific therefore that will be an impetus to explain what is all about development So what you have said is all right, but we need a benchmark eh, to understand where it can encompass. You are merangkumi semua pentaktiran kamu tadi. What is the word? What is the interpretation that can encompass all that you have mentioned just now? So there must be a, a, a strong uh, definition. Then only you can include that whatever that you have mentioned all in that. So how are we going to define? So this is development you have mentioned just now. This is development, okay. This is development. This is development, and you'll be surprised. I, my background is economics and pure economics, but I, when I read Amitya Sen and Mabul Hag, these two great scholars, Ujanga dalam dalam dunia 
uh, pembangunan, uh, both uh, development economist, I was very impressed because it's not just quantitative. See, when you say economy means what you come to your mind is GDP, correct? It's all about GDP and growth. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not against, we're not debunking or kita menolak kepentingan. I can mix, I can mix language. Eh? No problem. I won't use Tamil, of course. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> yes. Growth is not that we are against, but growth is not complete. GDP is not complete. Because when you talk about poor, especially poverty and all that, it's not just GDP. A country can be very much GDP, GDP wise is high and etc. But what about other aspects, the well being? So these are things that we're going to look into. So this is development. This is development. All this, even this is development. You can see the picture. Can you see it? Okay. <laughs> all right. All this development, human centered. All right. All these are related to development. Huh? All these are development issues. So for almost every writer, a different definition develop, uh, development exists. Let's look into this. Huh? Important to first distinguish between, always when you, when you speak about development, before we arrive at the framework of development, huh? we have to know the fundamentals, fundamentals of development. So that can lead to, to build, to construct our framework. The framework is, a, is the uh, ultimate goal of development. But before that, we need to have scaffolding yeah, to build up, to construct what is all about development. That's what I'm doing now. Okay? Because being an, academic, uh, being an academic is always like that. Yeah? We go from the rudimentary, step by by, and structure. It's so easier for you to understand. If there's any question, please, you can interrupt and you can interject. You can just ask. No problem at all. Please ask. Don't be like my students eh, sometimes. <laughs> Don't just listen. You can always ask. Just blame in Chalah dan Tanya. Yeah? By A, development as a static condition, static. Do you think it's static or dynamic? Is development static? Static means uh, stand still, stand still, doesn't grow, or is it dynamic? Of course, it's dynamic. It's a process. Okay, it's a process. It's not just achieving the goal, but the process is given importance as well. Eh? Which is which? Definitely is dynamic. So these are the questions that we are going to see one by one. If growth wrecks the environment, eh? uh, if growth wrecks the environment, and if growth deadens working life, is it development? Yes or no? If growth wrecks environment, that means uh, you have GDP growth here. I'm talking about there's a... There's a Let's say there's infrastructure, okay? There's a, a lot of uh, high-rise tower, concrete, concrete jungle, uh, GDP is going high, but it brings problems to environment. Rex means it brings problem, okay? It brings, uh, okay, malapetaka uh, kepada apa disebut sebagai environment, alam sekitar. And if growth deadens working life, mempengaruhi kita, menjejaskan kita, adakah itu pembangunan? Is that growth? Do you think that's that is it that is that development? Development is not that because development means the end result must bring what? Well-being. Not at the expense of, not the, at the expense of what? At the, at, the, at the expense of development, you have environmental problem, pollution problem. Let's say I, I build up, I'm building up, there's a lot of development there, a high-rise tower, uh, let's say flats, apartment, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera and new roads are being built, et cetera, et cetera, and, and vehicles are increasing every day. And that sounds nice on the surface, but let's say at the expense of what? If that brings, let's say, if that brings a lot of repercussions, do you think that is development? So these are the issues that we're going to see. So development here means, that means as a result of that, it must also bring uh, well-being. See, the problem with today, if you look carefully here, yeah, we are suffering from what? We are suffering from what, actually? Not only pollution, if you look, if you look at our success, eh, we are suffering from the success that we have achieved, actually. If you look carefully, mankind is suffering from what? Success itself. We claim that we are successful, but we are suffering from the consequent of our success. Mark that word. Eh? We are suffering from the consequent 
of our success. These are all the elements of development, actually. We are suffering from the consequence of our success. That means we claim that ourselves as successful, GDP-wise, income-wise, okay, uh, property, everything. But the result is we are suffering because of that. So just ponder on that. Right? We are suffering from the from the uh, what from the the, this, the the achievement that we have made. Eh? All right, that that part you, you look into it. Development looks to at what is produced. If growth merely produces more Walmart junk rather than school or clinics, is it development? No. Development must bring in what? The end result must be well-being. Remember, in the equation, the end result must be well-being. That is, that's what has been defined by these great scholars. Eh? They have they realized. But earlier, it was not the equation. It was not well-being. It was growth, GDP, economic. That was the reason why there was a turning point in me. I changed from the school of economics to development. <laughs> I saw there's well-being. It's not just growth. Because earlier it was growth in the equation. The ultimate goal is to achieve growth. All right? Come back. Development attends to social consequences of production. If growth merely concentrates wealth in the hands of a few, is it development? That means development. That means when I say development, wealth is in the hands of few. The richer is getting richer and the poorer is getting poorer. Yang kaya terus menjadi kaya, yang miskin terus menjadi papa kedana. Do you call that? These are the issues that we are going to address, actually. So this is a development issue, actually. This is a development issue. I haven't come to the framework yet. Huh? I'm just giving you the, uh, the general idea, the issues that, that lead to the constructing of uh, what is development all about, the framework itself. More, most contentiously, development anal analyzes who controls production and consumption. If the growth process is controlled by few powerful people rather than the many people who make it possible, is it development? That means 20% of the wealth of the world is controlled by this 20%. So the 80% is working for this 20%. So if you bring in, uh, so if you bring wealth distribution, it's going to be a problem. So is it a development then? It means the belt is championed by only few, handful, not all. So always we come across, isn't it? There must be a proper distribution. Your Gini coefficient must be closer, correct? Yes, Gini coefficient must be closer. How? When it's not like that. If growth means subjecting the world's people to solely consumption, it's development. Today, you have, you see, one main problem in economy is, among others, is uh, it creates a... Uh, uh, consumer society, do you agree? And it's growing now more and more with all this online shopping and all that. Because it's so easy. The idea is supply creates its own demand. That's the principle there. Supply creates its own demand. Which means when there's no consumption, there won't be any... See, the, the argument is like this. When there's no consumption, there won't be any... Uh, when there's no demand, there won't be any supply. So they have to keep on what? inciting uh, uh, consumption. They have to do that. Then only there will be always constant production. When there's constant production, there will be constant income coming in. And you must understand the repercussions. When there's constant supply, we are exhausting the resources. Correct? We are exhausting the resources. We, find, we have to find new resources. And when resources are depleting, what happens? Some people are suffering there, actually, and the prices will go high. And it, it is done, the worst still, at the expense of what? At the expense of environment, actually, our social well-being. So creating a consumerism, uh, consumerism uh, if you look into the Google and can search, I won't go in detail. Consumerism means you, you buy things not for, you, for the need. You buy things for the sake of consumption. There's a difference, eh? Buying things for need and buying things for sale consumption, there's a difference. I like to quote what Gandhi had said. It is now for everybody's need, not for everybody's greed. When, you see, if you look carefully, our needs are actually, uh, is, is minimal actually. 
for us to sustain sustainable development goal eh? for us to sustain actually we don't need so much see a set of plates you're buying every year you're going to buy new sets because you like it because you can see the, the in the advertisement everything coming there so you become a consume uh, uh, you you are practicing actually uh, consumerism you become a you become one of the whether you need or not you just buy for the sake of buying there could be other you you may have thousand one reasons for that so these are the things that are going to look and going to self reflect ourselves all right so <clears throat> if growth is an outcome of market process then no controls although a few people benefit is it development that means market control you're talking about what invisible hand that controls everything that means we talk about tangan yang tak nampak that is basically is capitalism we are not against capitalism if you read adam smith doctrine on capitalism he he spoke about welfare but the problem is over the years eh, i like to quote again gandhi what he says because mankind they give importance to not just need but coming back to the economic man giving importance to what greed not need and if you look at the fundamentals even i question this the fundamentals of economic definition it says that our needs are unlimited that's economy eh? but developing economics they look otherwise eh? they look from different angle our needs are the, the definition of economics says our needs are unlimited but resources are limited so if if you go on that on that uh, fundamental principle eh? i'm telling you till the end you're going to have problems that is only on economic man that means that we acknowledge our our what our weakness but mankind is more than that actually mankind is not subject to that we are more than that so that we come back to that so there's a weakness in the definition of economy itself that is why development ec economics grew because of that actually and that's that's the reason why development economics grew okay so what is development coming back same question there are two dimensions actually we'll talk about economics eh? there are two dimensions to it one is conventional di uh, dimensions the other one is contemporary dimension now conventional dimension i just mentioned to you the focus is on growth because growth is okay everything is achieved the contemporary definition questions that and who are these people the two great thinkers scholars who revolutionized the thinking okay especially in the in the a scholarly world a scholarly world in fact there were so many great thinkers have questioned that but they were not in the limelight because they were not uh, uh, regarded recognized as a, a secular scholars all right in fact there were so many of them great thinkers if you can see great thinkers great spiritualist if i were to say yeah? great spiritualist okay prophets they were questioning that actually but he was not in the limelight but when these two great great uh, scholars uh, they are from eastern both are from eastern uh, and uh, they revolutionized the whole thing on this uh, the concept of development we look into that slowly so and that explains development with a difference because you have now two schools of thought one is a conventional development the other one is the uh, contemporary so what are these are you all okay with me so far any interjection you want to ask any question No, huh? You can, huh? Yes. <laughs> transformation or development? Now we are looking at transformation. Where then? Where this transformation took place? When I say there's conventional and there's uh, there is a contemporary, so where this transformation took place from the past to present? When? So history. So this a little bit. I touch on this a little bit. In 1949, what happened? This is after World War II. Huh? That's where Harry S. Truman came. he 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 declared to the world he wants to actually uh, because at that time you must understand they championed the whole world huh? uh, because of uh, bombardment atomic bombardment in hiroshima and nagasaki uh, us became hero okay before that was great britain so called great britain then uh, then us so he declared that in 1949 is the era of development based on economic growth he says economically you you have uh, achieved everything you have grown that's enough it will solve all the problem so followed by then followed by uh, united nation they adopted that 
uh, 60s as the first decade of development and 70s as the second decade of development. I won't waste my time so much on that. But 80s uh, became the lost decade of development. Suddenly, uh, 80s became a lost decade. That means it was a failure, complete failure, because they saw growth was there, especially in southern uh, region, let's say in, in uh, America, Latin America, uh, Africa on the whole, Saharan Africa and Africa on the whole, and Southeast Asia, they saw even the growth, uh, the economic growth was there, but people were still suffering. People were still deprived. The word deprivation only came later, given so much importance. Uh, people were still in poverty. So what went wrong, actually? What went wrong? Then that is where these two heroes came. Uh, what went wrong? Before I talk about these two heroes, they realized that, you see, growth, eh? Very simple. When they, it, when they came out with this do doctrine, eh, when GDP goes up, uh, there will be GDP here means income. Eh? Put it simple. If income goes up, that means the country is becoming richer, and they say there will be a distribution of income, and this distribution of income will be shared by all. Hence, what happens? Gini coefficient will be good and you will have less people deprived. Isn't it? In principle, correct? But that doesn't happen. They, they say how it can happen is through trickle-down effect. You can also search, go back and say, these are the keywords you can take and you can go back and do some studies on that. They say based on trickle-down effect. That means, uh, let's say I'm the capitalist, I become richer and richer. What I will do is, I will use that money, I spend back the money. I spend the money or Simple term, eh? when I become richer, I give more income tax. I buy a bunch of zakat. Or I'll, I'll, I'll invest more. I create job through income tax. The money will be spent for, uh, for, for infrastructure, schools, etc., etc., and uh, welfare purposes. And zakat also say it reaches the people. And then what happens? There, there won't be any much of income gap. Income back will be better. Gini coefficient will be better. Okay? How many of you are not aware of Gini coefficient? Gini coefficient is actually <laughs> it's an economic uh, measurement. Eh? There are so many measurements. In economic eh, poverty measurement, eh, you have absolute poverty measurement, relative po uh, poverty measurement, uh, hardcore poverty measurement is the same. And one more is Gini coefficient or Pakali Gini. You know, you have seen a 0. 399 and 0 0.412, they have like that Gini coefficient. That's in fact zero to one. If your figures are getting nearer to zero, you're better. That means you have you don't have a disparity rich and poor. Very close. That means uh, the rich may earn, let's say, let's say uh, 10,000, the poor may they may coming close, let's say 2,000, 3,000. So the gap is not much more not wider. The gap is always closer. A country, yeah. Uh, can be rich, very rich, but if you go to the country and see, yeah, so many people are still suffering. That's what happened, Philip Asselton. You know, the United Nations personnel who came in 2019, he, he wept practically. And that's, that was an eye opener. People started to raise their, they can't, no choice, because always when an outsider come and criticize them, then only it works. Before that, Prof, I think so, Prof, one of you, one of them, been questioning that. Been, yes, yes, but nothing happened, eh? especially the measurement part, the, on the measurement and also on the poverty line income and all that. Nothing was done. Then only 2,000, 2,208, from 980 came 2,208. Can you see the vast difference? 2019, they came out with new uh, poverty line income. 2,200, before that, we used to question. Why so low? Why so low? PLI, Portland income is low, means that means what? You can't capture so many poor, isn't it? Yes. So the higher it is, is better. Then when they realize it was zero, in, it was 16, it was 0.4%. 2019, they came out actually and they took it out. 0.2% poverty in Malaysia. And there's no hardcore poor. Imagine. Then he came and questioned, then there was a lot of changes. And that's another thing. So trickle-down effect did not work because the why do you think what this is what we call trickle-down effect? This is the illustration. Eh? Wealth is this is fine. Wealth is you see, 
There's so much of wealth. Supposed to, all of them supposed to get, when you pour, what happens? This will overflow, right? Usually what happens when you pour, this will overflow, isn't it? It will overflow and, and all the, I'm sure you have seen, you have gone to party, yeah? You pour the wine or whatever and everything, okay? So suppose you share, but what is this actually? They're siphon. It's supposed to happen like this. That's how, it's good. In principle, it's good. But what went wrong actually? Is, the, is it because of the, of the, uh, the concept is wrong? Who is who's the problem there? Is it the concept, the knowledge called trickle down effect or who? So development uh, should address human. One principle I'm telling you. First, it must have, it must address human. And if possible, from young. Start from young. Melentuh buluh biar dari perdebongnya. In Tamil also we have alul walia tu tu, imbal walima. You can't change a person when he's young. It's grown very difficult. So coming back, the kind of system we have, the education system, all are connected actually. All are connected. You can't run away. It's all connected. So transformation we talk about later. So this what happens. So human, same. It's pouring. Supposed to you are supposed to go down, but what happened? Eh? The, the first part of it becomes bigger and bigger. The container becomes bigger and bigger. What does that mean? And it's bigger and bigger. What does it mean? Greed. So Gandhi is right. It's enough for everybody's need, but not for everybody's. If you're greedy, eh, do you think it's enough? Eh? Even if I get one, one month, one million, do you think it's enough? Because I have, I'll have expenses. I may spend money, so much money for everything. For my handbag, for my car, I may spend for my watch. My watch will cost fortune because that's how it is. Because the economic principle, it says, man's need is unlimited. I'm coming back to that point. So that's where you need to question that. Now, when I say economic man, do you think mankind is only economic man? What, what happened to that spiritual man? I'm not, when I say spiritual man, I'm talking about some religious stuff. I'm talking about fundamentally, we have built our parameter. We think that we are only body, mind, intellect being, but we are more than that. Science has proven today, quantum physics says that the basis of material is non-material. Science has proven. Quantum physics has proven today. Quantum physics says the material world is actually is illusion. Two Nobel Prize winners. Eh? They have mentioned illusion means not to say it's not there, it's there, but transient. There's something else. There's a fundamental basis we call non matter. That non matter is the what we talk about spiritual. Spiritual means something is non matter. So we are not just material being. In other words, I'm not actually, uh, I am spiritual being. I am spiritual being actually, but behaving like a material being. So fundamentally, I am actually that. So if you can understand that, then what Gandhi says holds water is true. Then you can understand what are they trying to say. Coming back to this. So all this you can go through. And this is what happens actually. So the cause of it is these guys, all of them, isn't it? And in the end, this is what happens. So there was a problem in trickle-down effect. And trickle-down, in fact, is actually the fundamental principle of capitalism, actually. Today, we talk about uh, blue ocean strategy and all that, but we talk in principle, but in actual fact is red ocean strategy. Competition is not wrong competition, but we compete at the extent of others. Again, coming back to the mindset. How do you change that mindset? So before we talk about social reform, we need to have self-reform. So that you can't run away. Otherwise, uh, you, otherwise, we'll be blowing hot air and cold air together. That means that we're always paradoxical. You must start with somewhere. Transformation within. Then only you can change. Yeah? These are all the fundamentals of development. All these are development economics. Eh? For information, like you read uh, Amitya Sen's and Mabu Ulat's, uh, especially Amitya Sen's that development is freedom and all that. Amazing. Yeah? Amazing. So he says, more he grows, the more comes he will get. So this is Principally is that 
And this is what happens in chronology. If you, if you can go through in how it changes, the transformation happens. It was growth in the, in the, in the beginning, then economic growth and distribution. If you can see here in 1970s, now why we came out with affirmative policy. Eh? That is, what is the affirmative policy in 1971 we had? New economic policy, exactly. New economic policy. That means the policy came out affirmative. That means cater to the need those who are deprived. If you look at the principle, it's beautiful. Those who are deprived, it cater to the need. They have to bring them up. So you need to have that policy because trickle-down effect was backfiring. Trickle-down effect was backfiring. In fact, I would say, if you look at the May 13th issue, it's more of an economic problem, fundamentally. People may re relate that politically, they may relate that as racial. To me, from an economic perspective, it's fundamentally that's the root cause. Because the, 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 the economic mechanism was on, is, is on capitalism, that's trickle-down effect. It won't work. All right, because there will be a situation rich becomes richer and the poor will be poorer and deprived. All right, so that was happening. Yeah? So there was changes in economic growth and distribution and 80s. That's why in 90s, right, we started having human development, development as freedom, sustainable development started to develop after uh, 90s because they realized something is really wrong. And if you look at the whole SDGs, uh, most of them uh, on development, if you look, uh, the fundamental is poverty, yeah? deprivation, yeah? isn't it? And all this you can connect to poverty. Yeah? All this, even the MDG, uh, first MDG also same. Uh, 2000, 2015, and this also same. You look at it. Yeah? So this was a new way of thinking and, and measuring poverty was developed, which is to shift the political development economy from national income amounting to people-centered policy. That's why you may have heard development is actually should be people-centered. But people-centered, and don't misunderstand, eh? there's a theory on anthropocentrism. You can go and check, anthropocentrism. Anthropocentrism is, is actually, is not, it is people-centered, but is uh, deviated. That means that eh, those who are anthropocentric, they think that humans are superior, others are all slave to me, I will use them at the expense of their life. I exploit, the world is created to me, is for my own, well-being, not for other, but that is not the way. That, no, I'm not talking about that kind of uh, 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 people-centered. It is more of ecocentrism. That means you go in harmony with nature, both living organism and also non-living organism. You have to go in harmony, biotic and abiotic, we call that term. That means it is, you're living with, with both living organism and non-living in harmony. How to go and live in harmony? Because all of us are connected. The tree and me, are, are we connected or not? If you look at physically, if you don't have that human-centered, you don't, you, don't, you don't humanize development. When you don't humanize development, I mean, you don't humanize development. Your tree is money, nothing but money. So you won't bother, correct? You will just chop down, etc. For what? For this? At the expense of what? At the expense of uh, way, uh, jerubu and all that stuff, pollution, etc., etc., etc. And you know what happens when, when you clear jungle and all that. The repercussions is tremendous. So, if you don't have that human-centeredness, that means you don't have that, uh, the, the, the concept of well-being of all living organisms. When the, the tree is my lungs, I would say. What I inhale, what I exhale, the tree inhales. What the tree exhale, oxygen, I inhale. So, tree are, is tree and me are one? I see, we are connected, actually. We are not one, but we are connected. That is why if you look at our orang asli, they know how to live sustainably. Compared to we are supposed to be educated. Eh? What kind of education we call that? We say that we are civilized. Wow. We claim that we are civilized. But look at orang asli, how they can live there for millennium. How? Oh, because they live in harmony. They respect, they honor the nature. That is human-centeredness. Of course, the way they do, we say animism. Eh? And, but we claim that we are all uh, learned, spiritually and all that. But they are not. But they can live in harmony. Their method, eh, we think, eh, from, our, from our very uh, prejudicial, uh, superficial view, but if you live with them in anthropology, then you'll understand. They are far and away advanced. They know that if I harm the tree, 
but harm the river, it will harm back the deck fire. They know. But we humans here, we know. And yet we do. That's the greatest puzzle. Lah. That's the greatest puzzle in the world is what you know. Knowing and yet doing. But that is very difficult. You can wake up a person who's sleeping, but you can't wake up a person who's pretending to sleep. <laughs> Most of us are pretending to sleep. That's the problem. Why? Because fundamentally it's wrong. It's not being properly uh, transformed. That's where you need human dimension from young. From young huh? So people-centered. Hence, development is conceptualized differently today vis-a-vis -vis in the past. So conventional development is all about economic growth, as I mentioned. Contemporary development, what is this? So what is this conventional uh, dimension of uh, development? So conventional is all based on what? Economic growth, as I mentioned just now, GDP. Problems to conventional measure depend on GDP itself, growth itself. Okay, covers self-sustenance that's inadequate to measure development. Eh? And uh, does not take into account much the distribution of income and all that, environmental costs, top of all, human factor. It doesn't take, they look at human as labor, human as money, what I can extract from you. That was a capitalist approach. Pure capitalism I'm talking about. Then hence came another mind to revolutionize, Karl Marx. Okay? Brought in uh, socialism and communism. But that also eventually problem because why? Again, human. The those who control, we can see Putin today. Human, isn't it? Why? Greed. So it's not the ism. It's nothing to do with this. I remember what a uh, long time ago, uh, uh, Sheikh Hussein Halatas, professor, is, I think after Professor Unku Aziz, he was the, he mentioned, uh, it's nothing wrong with all this socialism, ism, ism, ism. The problem is human. The problem is human, fundamentally. So that's what we are, and the difference, and the difference, what is contemporary dimension of development? Human development, of course. How do you humanize development? When I say human development, how do you humanize? When I say humanize means what? How do you bring all these values into development? How do you bring all these values? Humankind, multi, mankind is basically is multidimensional. And development needs to be also a multidimensional phenomenon. That's where the word multidimensional is coming slowly. Yeah? So hence, holistic development. When I say multidimensional, we're looking at multifaceted, multidisciplinary, and hence holistic. We are not debunking anything. We are not telling this, not, this is important and that is important. We are saying that it needs to be comprehensive. It needs to complement each other, just like the tree and, and mankind. We need to complement each other. Who is better? If you, live, if you, if you take life, eh, both are important. But I cannot. Both are important, actually. Interconnected. Do you agree? You have to agree. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, okay. So this what, that's what it means, this transformation. Therefore, one may want to know Mabul Haq. These two names you must know. This is your, one of your assignments. Eh? One of the assignments, you go back and explore these two great thinkers. They have given, I have actually some of the talks, but I have no time for that. Uh, Mabul Haq and both are friends. Eh? One is from Pakistan, Mabul Haq is from Pakistan. And uh, Amitya Sen is from India. A Nobel Prize winner, 1998. It's a Nobel Prize winner, Amitya Sen, development economist. Some yeah, I'll give. I'll give. Online. One, one, yeah, online, I'll give. And one of the book is uh, Development as Freedom. That's and like one of the book in Facebook. Yeah, yeah. The beautiful book, yeah, actually. Really yeah. And it's a fantastic book. And, uh, but unfortunately, Mabu Ulhaq actually passed on earlier. And Amitya Sen continued the, 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 the pursuit eh, on development economics and became popular. In fact, today's uh, Al Qaeda. Uh, Santos Alcaya and uh, James Foster and all that, you must have heard of these people. Eh? Uh, they are actually, they are the student of uh, uh, Amitya Sen, actually. For them, Amitya Sen is, was their guru, actually. In fact, they adopted the idea from these two people. Eh? I'll come back to that. So this is um, the handsome man, eh? Abu Hulak, eh? then Amitya Sen. I'm sure you've come across, right? Uh, development as freedom. You can read the book and also you can Google search. There's so many uh, write up talks. And nowadays, I think uh, the beauty of today, internet is beautiful actually. Isn't it? 
everything is there. So Mabul Haq, based on human development report, people are the real wealth of nation vis-a-vis -vis in comparison to economic growth. People are the, you take care of the people. There needs to be transformation in people. Then when the people is transformed well, then the manifestation of his ideas will be better. When he is not transformed, then the manifestation will be in a, in a crude uh, term, be screwed up. Isn't it? Yes, that's what's happening today. So they say there's no proper inner engineering. We have done a lot of engineering outside. What about this? This in inner engineering. H have you read this manual? See, when you want to know how a, a handphone functions, you need to read the manual, right? But did we really read about our manual? The great masters, the great spiritualists and prophets, they actually, they have given you the manual, actually, in the form of scripture or whatever. But are we reading it? The, the, the fundamentals, huh? the people are the real wealth of. Economic growth is one of the means, actually. We are not debunking, throwing economy for achieving human development. One of the means, you see, you have this, this, uh, uh, this dichotomy eh, of what you call the two entity. Eh? One is uh, what you call as, uh, 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 on one hand, you call what you call uh, means, and the other one is end. Which is weak means it, 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 something that use that you, you need that to achieve the end, correct? Means is something that you need to achieve the end. Which is more important? The end justify the mean or means justify the end? Take that, take note and go and find out. Which is important? The means justify the end. That means whatever that come again. Yes. Real uh, wealth of nation. I mean, here, in comparison to economic, in, in comparison to economic growth, GDP itself, people are the real wealth of nation. That means eh, here, you're giving importance to the need of people, the significance of people on the whole. That means people or the wealth here means you're talking not in terms of material wealth. Eh? That means you need to build up people so that he become empowered, he become competent, not only empowered, competent women for that matter. If you don't take people as a wealth, what happened? Petraki will always champion, correct? The male will always champion. The very fact today they realize the importance of what? Women. So women need to be empowered. Empowerment is one important factor in human-centered. Empowerment is important. So somebody has to be empowered properly. So you look at, so when I have a factory, let's say, when I have a factory, how am I, how am I, how am I going to manage my factory? When I get, let's say, uh, abnormal profit in economics, you say, so much profit, all that is going to go into my pocket or I'm going to distribute as a bonus to the people because I look at people as the wealth. If not for the people, I won't exist. I always tell my, even my colleagues and all that, eh? if not for students, I don't exist. So I don't work. I don't just work to get my salary. Eh? So the human centered comes when, you know, I look at students as part of me. They're going to be future leaders in very various departments. Correct? So I must look at them as the wealth, not in material sense. So I need to empower them. How to empower them? Teach them how to think. Teach them thinking, not giving them knowledge alone. Eh? You train students how to think. That is what lacking today. We just spoon feed them. We spoon feed them and they vomit. That's what's happening. We spoon feed them. The system is like that. But when you teach them with knowledge and all that, so much so they don't appreciate because you know why? They have been groomed like that. So I have to unlearn what they have learned. I have to do that. Always I do that. Unlearn. So therefore I can, I can actually, uh, re they can relearn. So that's what's happening. The task is more, of course, but no problem. So that's what he had been very well. Take them as not just as a human capital. Huh? It's wrong, actually, the term. Take them more than that. They're valuable, actually. So give them the right way of thinking. So teach uh, for, think for thinking. Yeah? Teaching is thinking, actually. Uh, teaching is actually for thinking. So empower them properly. So that's how it means. So the employer and employee, how you regard? 
a leader and people, how you regard people. So if it's going to, you regard people as, uh, as just uh, as a labor per se, okay, human force are labor per se, professional or semi-professional or manual, manual labor, that means it's from top to down. It's top, that's where we talk about top to down, right? You just bulldoze, you don't care what's happening. But if it should be otherwise, right? It should be. I'm sure you heard that. It should be what? Top to down or bottom to top? Bottom to top. That means you must listen to them. It's important. You must listen to them. That means you respect them. You honor them. Do you think a person who has got PhD and a person working in the, in the Sawa Padi, are they different? Or on the same basis? Actually, they're same basis. But we have forgotten, we have been influenced, we have been indoctrinated from young. That PhD means, wow, great. It's there. Real knowledge is not in PhD for me. But that doesn't mean you should not take. You need that foundation, but don't get conceited because you have PhD. This. Knowledge is more beyond that, actually. Wisdom is beyond that. So it's more than that. So coming back, you got it? So that's how they look at people. How you fair your economy with people, not just taking them as producers. You take them as producers. Then you regard them as just... That's what happened in uh, rubber estates. I did my research. Uh, my my uh, master's, I did my research on uh, labor. Uh, colonial time and then... Uh, post-colonial. I was comparing both. And colonial time, how they were treated. You know, worse than a dog. So you talk about dog-eat-dog -dog culture. It's that. So that kind of uh, situation. Uh, people are real wealth of nation vis-a-vis -vis economic growth. Economic growth, uh, GDP is very high and all that. But fundamentally, let's say GDP high. Let's say what's the point when I clear the jungle and uh, uh, what do you call, I get a lot of income from Balakan. Uh? logging and all that, eh? but environmentally eh, based, people are sick, what's the point? That's what I'm trying to say. Income is high, but I'm suffering from loneliness. I'm rich, big house, everything's big, but I'm suffering from loneliness. That's why poverty, eh, I was telling just now, it's a state of mind, how you interpret. It is true what Prop said this morning, eh? in Kelantan and Terengganu, it's a state of mind. Their benchmark is not based on uh, uh, what you call the conventional method of measuring. It's asset-based. It's something else. So it's very subjective, how you define poverty. And today they have come up with a lot of other measurements. They even use MRI to, to find out why people, some people poor, they become chronic poor. It means intergenerational transmission of poverty. They're becoming poor for so long and they don't change. They don't want to change. They're happy with that. Culture of poverty, why? Oscar Lewis. One of the prominent scholars behind this, eh? Oscar Lewis, you can take note. So people are real bad. You got it? Clear? So uh, economic growth is one of the means for achieving end. Eh? So another question I'd like to ask, pose to you is, which is, which is important? The end justify the means or the means justify the end? And this, this kind of question I don't ask much among the students. Lah. You get confused. So I will give them the basic. I don't go in detail like that. Okay, for you all, okay. Matured is okay. This is important. Eh? The end justify the means. That means eh, when you say end justify the means, that means what do you know? What is important is as long as I achieve is enough. As long as I become rich is enough. How I become rich is not important. You think it's right? We are thinking? That's where another danger. The thinking is wrong. The means justify the means. Not an end eh, is, is very... Uh, to me, that can backfire a lot. You come back to the late. So that's what they're trying to say. Earlier it was, the end itself is not well-being. The end was growth itself. As long as you achieve growth, successful. Because they say trickle-down effect will take care, the rest. But they did take care. No, because greed. When you become greed, 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 the money won't distribute. You try to avoid a lot of things. You don't give. That's why we have CSR. Corporate social responsibility. That means what? Nice way of telling, hey, please, give back. 
Nice way of telling. Why we are, I'm trying to bring in all these concepts, right? So you will understand. Why we have CSR? So the one where they distribute properly. Isn't it? Yes. CSR is one way of distributing trickle down effect, but they're using uh, uh, law. Huh? So it's development as eco uh, freedom. Economist Amatya said advances this, yeah, all this. So it's, his is on capability. I come back to that because time factor. Uh, he talks about freedom actually. He talks about freedom in the sense that not to freedom free, like a free bird. Freedom means, eh, you see, the poorer you are, there have a lot of obstacles, correct? The poorer you are, your, your self-esteem is affected. You have, you have infinity complex. Monetary-wise, you are nominal. And you don't have access to a lot of privileges. You don't have access. Even to internet, etc., etc. So you wouldn't know what's happening. So Amitya Sen says, the only way to enhance your one way, he says, is they must be given freedom. A lot of unfreedom that put people down. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just to take some time. Please. So when you talk about freedom, I'm just thinking. Please, like, please. So countries like so they always use this argument, right? Like countries like Singapore, Japan, South Korea, the economy growth is more important. They went as far as to say that you know freedom is more important if you don't have food on your table. Yeah. So yeah, how do you square that together with this? Beautiful, uh, beautiful question. I've discussed with this among some of my friends went for a wedding in Singapore. And also India, for example. India yes. is the biggest democracy. Exactly. But the, Very true. The poverty group. Correct. It's one of the very true. Very true. See, there are a lot of exceptions. There are always there are a lot of exceptions. When we say a principle, eh, there are a lot of exceptions coming in, and we have to look into the exceptions and many other factors. Eh? So one is Singapore. Singapore. When I was talking to my colleagues, some of my friends in Singapore, they say that now the country they need is eh, is they say they need sociologists. They don't need engineering anymore because they have developed GDP wise and all that. Okay, sociologist means for well-being. People actually, the work, 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 eh, they don't have the so-called well-being, leisure to actually enjoy what you have achieved. So what they do when they want to enjoy, they take holiday, they come to Malaysia, they go to Australia and all that stuff. The currency is good. Yes, definitely. Here you can see, they can move around. So we are trying to have... <laughs> yeah, I can throw. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So there are pros and cons. Uh, there are pros. Uh, we, 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 this, these principles, uh, we are trying to philosophize first. So to create a benchmark first. We are, what we are doing, to, always the benchmark must be ideal. So people talk about, yeah, Singapore is all right, good. But we don't look at only one aspect of it. What about the well-being? See, I can, I can, if I can sit at home uh, with nominal income uh, and I can be happy, uh, I'm not poor, I'm not poor, you know. The poor only comes in uh, when I'm disturbed. When I'm disturbed, that means even a rich man can be disturbed. Yes. So poverty, the ambit has become very big nowadays. Poverty is not just confined to income. Therefore, it's not confined to income. I'm coming back to the point. That's why we have multidimensional poverty index claim about. All right? That's one. And India, yes, democracy, too much of anything is bad. Too much of, that's why they say balance. You need to have balance. And that to come to the balance is not, of course, we all are struggling. But countries like Scandinavian countries, eh, to some extent, eh, their happiness index, it, it neutralizes. I think they have managed to have a uniformity in their mindset. So that's a good benchmark. But that doesn't mean they don't have any hiccups. They may have, but it is at the minimal level. Uh, that's what is important is. So Scandinavian country is my benchmark. India, yes, freedom. Too much of anything is bad. A coffee, uh, uh, a, a coffee seller, he knows better than the prime minister about politics. <laughs> That's a joke in India, prof. <laughs> he knows better. Because you talk to them, huh? I'm telling you, they know everything. Too much of freedom is a problem also. Lah. Because too much of everything you criticize. India is one of them. That's a problem. You can't talk to them. Huh? Because they know. Isn't it? <laughs> it's very difficult. That's another problem in India. Singapore is that. They said they need sociologists because we need to have this so-called well-being and kind of, yes. Sorry. Well, the previous prime minister once said that Malaysia is a... Uh, Malaysia is a... Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> guided, uh, yeah, there's so many terms I, I know who was that. Guided uh, democracy and all kind of justification uh, you have. Uh, all kind of justification. Yes, it's true. What you say is true and uh, your comments are valid. Uh, but China, China was talking about China. Uh, yes, China, yes. China. How was China? Good things and bad things. Yeah, there are. But it's an exception. Yeah, yeah, because China, you see, they say it's claimed to be communism, eh? communism, eh? but they have uh, they have actually diverted from that. Eh? Means they are selective. Eh? Politically, they are communists, but economically, they have opened the door. Eh? So China is very smart. They learned from probably from USSR. It was backfiring actually. So actually, it was it was uh, reverse domino theory. You know, domino theory. Every the 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 the, the capitalist was the, was going down. The dominion theory in the beginning, when you when you push one box, all box will fall, isn't it? That's what happening in Southeast Asia. Countries were attracted to communism. That's why uh, we had uh, US came in and uh, Vietnam War. You know, Rambo and all that, all from that actually, <laughs> Vietnam War and all that. But now it's reverse, eh? and and where communism is crumbling, and uh, I think China is smart, very intelligent. They saw this, so they need to be flexible a little bit, not in all area. Otherwise, they would have allowed Hong Kong. You're trying to have a very strong grip, and Taiwan, they are also. Eh? So, again, coming back to that, eh? uh, it's good in a way. They are trying to strike a balance. La. It's good because sometimes you learn uh, from what is happening around and you change. That, that's how you, you transform yourself. You strike a balance. But you need a benchmark anyway. So, clear. I'm, I'm sure that we have addressed that, those questions there. So, End of the day, yeah, there's a, I, I, there, was a, uh, there was a beautiful story. I was, uh, there was a movie on the uh, screaming of an ant. Screaming, the title of the movie is Screaming of an Ant. Ant can scream. Eh? This is husband and wife. Both were traveling actually to India to seek for truth. They want to find a guru. Guru means in, in, in Tamil, it means or Sanskrit, it means dispeller of ignorance. Gu means darkness. Ru means, Ru means dispeller, remover. So gu means darkness, uh, gu means darkness, ru means uh, remover, removal of darkness. So then they found the guru. Eh? The guru, they see a lot of paradox in India, you know, both. You have both. On one side is spiritual, the other one is terrible poverty. India is full of paradox. Anyway, coming back to that. And they met a guru. Guru says, he wrote something in Sanskrit and asked him to go back and look for it. So he went back and looked at the meaning. He says, happiness is not here and there, it's right under your nose in your garden. What is trying to say? You are searching for everywhere, but actually it's within. If you realize that, it's not time, it's not space, it's where you are. Of course, there are also other factors also involved. But okay, coming back to this. Uh, development, uh, this is beautiful. I like this caption of what Amartya Sen says. In a nutshell, uh, this is what he's trying to say. If you read his books, eh, I'm just giving you the, the essence of it. Develop, when people ask what is development, Development is capability expansion. When you have your potential, right? You have your potential, you have your empowerment, you have your, uh, what do you call, uh, expertise and all that. If you can, that can be expanded. Right? The more you, see, a poor, I'm from a poor family. My father, parents were rubber tapers. How we can come out from the, 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 the poverty cycle? One thing is through education. So, capability extension was there. Parents were giving importance to education. So, when you were capability, you expand your capability, you can come out of poverty. What he said is correct. That means that you become empowered, in other words. When you become more and more empowered through education, one, one way is, you can come out from the cycle of poverty. Better off, because you meet people, networking, you are educated, you get a better job, etc., 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 etc. Isn't it? Yes. But a different lifestyle, thinking has changed. Isn't it? Yes. So it's, development is capability expansion. Poverty is capability deprivation. It's just a contrast, correct? So if you want to know Amitya Sen, you need to the half hour. What is development? Capability expansion. What is poverty? Capability deprivation. Which is true. It talks about capability in a broader, broader, broader perspective. And uses the word freedom also. There need to be freedom there. 
Without freedom, that means that you're being controlled 100%. You see, Singapore is smart. They control in certain sense, but not in all. They are very smart. You see, control here, I'm talking about all aspects. We ask, if you go and do a research on poor, a lot of, uh, and even we have done a poverty, we're coming to that. Eh? We have done a lot of research on poor, and there's one point I was doing research on how breakdown of poverty. That means, given a two case scenario, both of them were poor, let's say 10 years ago, uh, five years ago, why B can come out from the cycle of poverty, eh? whereas A cannot? Have you come across A and B? Both case scenario, but B can come out from the putaran ganas kemiskinan, kepompong kemiskinan, dia boleh keluar daripada kepompong kemiskinan. Sedangkan yang yang A pula tidak boleh. Dia masih terperangkap. Kenapa? Mungkin ada sesuatu kan? Katakan kita andaikan bantuan semua adalah. Semua ada sana. Tapi kenapa B tak boleh? Sikap. I'm sure that there's one contributing factor. And if you in theory of it, in theory of poverty, yeah, one main factor is mindset, sikap. There are a lot of other factors, but sikap is one factor also. So sikap is another thing. That means uh, when your attitude uh, is always what? One is the biggest problem in Malaysia attitude is for uh, dependency syndrome, I think. Eh? Syndrome banyak bergantung, eh? isn't it? Dependency syndrome. And that's my research, uh, Prof. I remember you were discussing with me, it gave me so much insight on uh, this multidimensional, I came to UKM, UKM and uh, we were discussing about that. And uh, that was actually, uh, what was that? Uh, yeah, on the uh, dependency syndrome. My research on poverty, uh, poverty in my PhD was on these three. I was looking at the non-material factors on, on poverty. Material factors are what? Income and non-income uh, and non income factors like house and all that. All that is, of course, deprivation. Yeah. But what about non-material? That means the behavioral pattern, the, the, the psychic, the emotions of the person. So three things I measured. One is the, the dependency syndrome. Second is fatalistic behavior, that deal. All because of I've been destined to born like that and low self-esteem. These three I was measuring. And I found that among the, I did for all races. So among the Chinese and Indians quite similar and come to dependency syndrome and, uh, and uh, fatalistic behavior, takdir. Oh, takdir menyebabkan it's because of destiny or talil itu menyebabkan. Eh? Tamil, eh? talil itu means uh, destiny. Eh? So, fate, finish. Among the Chinese were different. Eh? They're different. And low self-esteem is another factor. So, I was looking at the fundamentals. And it's true, a lot of research has been done now. They have done this, they have done MRI, MRI on the poor people and they found uh, there are a lot of some defects. Not major defects, some defects where they don't have the drive to function. They don't have the drive. Huh? Okay, they don't have the rangsangan to mencuba. Uh, one is dependency, dependency syndrome, fatalistic behavior, like this, a low self-esteem. So I was research, and, and it's true, it is, I found that vast majority were like that, more than 70% found in my findings, With, among others, of course, but this is the, also a major factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is my, the framework that I'm, I'm coming out with, uh, holistic development, hence, holistic development, you have uh, conventional, plus uh, contemporary development. I call it conventional, just a term, lah. all these are terms. Eh? Conventional means yang menjadi biasa, lah, yang traditionally accepted. That's what conventional means, that popularly accepted. Eh? Eh? Means uh, economic growth, GDP. But this must go hand in hand with all this human-centered. You have uh, uh, capability, sustainable, uh, sustainability. You can't run away from SDG. Eh? Empowerment, uh, spirituality, and equality, productivity, bottom to all that stuff. Okay? You need combination of both. You got it clear? This is the framework. Okay, and holistic development is actually, uh, I'm giving you in, in the form of equation, economic growth plus human development equals to well-being. So how to humanize development? That's the whole, your assignment. How do you humanize development? Okay, so that's where, and human development is not just one aspect. Eh? It's multifaceted, multidisciplinary, and multidimensional. Eh? That means you look at, 
human development in all aspects, from sociologically, politically, uh, economically, and even uh, culturally, and all aspects, right? multifaceted. It's not just human factor, it's just how do you humanize development? So when I say development is referring to human development, that means you must have the economic growth hand in hand with human development. To achieve what? Well-being. Abish. Okay. In fact, I'm supposed to go for my sabbatical to Bhutan actually to learn more about the gross national happiness and multi development. Couldn't because of uh, COVID. Everything was stopped. <laughs> supposed to go. My that was 2019. Uh, they approved and that's it. I was tempted. I couldn't go to Bhutan to learn about gross national happiness. That's the only country that they are that have adopted. Kita dah kita kita ada adopt tapi kita ubah suai sikit. Uh, month, uh, apa tu? Malaysian Wellbeing Index, eh? they adopted actually from there a little bit. Eh? So how, how okay when you say about when you say about see the in 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 theoretically in academic eh? when you say about holistic development there must be some measurement, isn't it? How are you going to measure economic growth? We know human development. How are you going to measure? Correct. Uh, there are ways, of course. One of them is multi-dimensional poverty index. MPI is one of them, actually. That's why my part two uh, presentation is on MPI. <laughs> MPI is one of them, actually. Poverty index is one of them, actually, because multi-dimensional related to human development, humanizing. They're looking at human. They are not looking at income per se. Income is low. Income is low, lower than the poverty line income. You are poor. Impang is lower than your food PLI, you are hardcore poor. It's miskin tegar. Distribution is very far, that means your genetic population is not good. Or relatively poor, relatively poor also same. They have a certain benchmark compared to another person, A and B, you compare. But I must get uh, half of the 50% below the median income compared to you, I'm, I'm poorer than you are. So that's all on income only, it revolves around income, nothing wrong. But it's not complete. It doesn't capture the human dimension that is on what? Health. Generally, the standard lah, standard lah, the banyak. Health. is from the Oxford, eh? from Oxford afterwards we go through. Health. Second is education. Then your standard of living. And they have about eight indicators. Three dimension, health, uh, education, and also one more is on standard of living. And uh, then you have sub sub uh, divisions that the eight indicators. Short break. Yeah, yeah, sure, please. Okay. Are you all okay to continue or five minutes break? Five minutes break, huh? Saya ni akan macam ni, ya? Ah, Q&A. And because 12 30 we need, what time? We need to... We uh, stop at 12 30. 30 yeah. So, now we have... Simplicity will leave the afternoon. Ah. I think the can and the soup for the other. But no problem. Yes. We are enjoying it. I'm going to. I'm Anthony was not supposed to join. You <laughs> started talking. Yeah, Rachel was supposed to hear bills. Hear cities, city near advance. So no I'm just saying, make it a bit relaxed. Yeah, yeah, make it relaxed, lah. Your copy and cup please, or water. Feel uh, please do get a drink for I, doctor. I'm finishing this prop, finish sure. about, about the finish because next sure. is, uh, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, next is I'm I'm finishing this. So you finish this uh, uh, little, little bit, just actually finishing framework. I still have another another many slides. I don't want to go through. Sure, sure. I just wanted to give you the framework only. And after that, I'm going to go on MPI. Okay. So after this, this is the framework. Uh so holistic development is this is coming to the measurement already. Really. So what is this quantitative and qualitative in nature? Quantitative is of course GDP. How do you measure holistic development on, on the, uh, what do you call, on economic growth is GDP. We have, that's quantitative approach, quantitative approach. That means you do survey and all that, after that you get the income. GDP is quantitative actually, quantitative. Apart the quantitative, angka-angka. Semuanya berupa angka-angka, you use mathematical equations, etc., etc. But humans are not like that. Humans are what? Emotional being, isn't it? So that's where you need to have qualitative approach, human development. So MPI is actually, uh, they're touching on the qualitative aspect, uh, though they use numbers, but actually they're touching on qualitative aspect. So what are these qualitative? Human development index is one of them. In fact, poverty started with HDI actually. Later I'll come to that. Then after that you have HPI, 
Then your green GNP, you know, G green GNP, there's a human element in there. Gross national happiness, there's a human element. See, all this, there's the human element there. Not just economy, eh? mm. there's a human element there. And of course, our famous next segment we are going to do on this. So I'm to the point, actually. Eh? MPI and gender empowerment and social impact assessment, uh, environmental impact assessment, and uh, dimension authority. Okay, I think that's all. Finish. Because after this, I'm going to elaborate more, but I think it's enough. Unless you want to, are you all familiar with the other index, happiness index? I think maybe just say what these. Ah, it will be there. Eh? Oh, this one, isn't it? This one, bro. Eh? Ah. So, human development, actually, eh, the history, this one, uh, human development index, all this I will, I will go through in my MPI because this is the okay. history. Okay. This, this uh, HDI uh, and, and uh, MPI is all connected. In fact, for your information, HPI, uh, HDI, I started with actually HDI in 1990. United Nations report came out because first time they were using other dimensions in comparison to income. First time. And uh, they used more than one, three to measure not just poverty, but well-being. That was amazing, HDI. Then improved by Amitya Sen also, HPI. Then 2010, Oxford University with uh, Sabina uh, Alkaya and uh, James Foster and uh, Santos, these three scholars, what they did, especially these two of them, Santos and Alkaya Santos and this, uh, James Foster, they came out with MPI. Today we are using Malaysia, adopted that based on Oxford approach, but we modified a little bit. We, we also include income in that. The original one, no income. Huh? They want to see, a, see, MPI is a complement to that. They don't want to include income, so that will skew the thing. But Malaysia, we included income. Uh, later, we discuss that. Eh? Then, uh, green GNP, is gross national product or GDP is all basically on numbers and all that. But G and green GNP, they take into account pollution, uh, soil depletion, you know, safe soil campaign? You heard about safe soil campaign? Uh, they take that into consideration in the GDP. Originally, they don't take into consideration. They only look at uh, money per se. It's very uh, monetary based. But they don't minus like pollution, waste. Do you, do you think they minus? No. Why do you minus is good? Because when you minus, then they know the actual cost, social cost. Huh? Uh, they call it social cost. Where you minus that, then you'll show the actual GDP is how much. That is GNP, green GNP. So they took into consideration of uh, the environmental effect. They, 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 they convert that into cost, how much you spend for uh, environmental improvement, uh, the cost of pollution and all that they take into consideration and they put in and the soil depletion and all that they minus. They have a way of calculating and they put in monetary term and you put in. At the moment, you don't even have, you don't calculate uh, householders, women, uh, householders, uh, women as a householder contribution in GDP. You don't, there's a big issue, isn't it? We don't contribute actually. Do you contribute? Do you think working at home, uh, housework is uh, less, work at home is less than outside? I think uh, COVID taught us the lesson. <laughs> Gave us the insight. Nah? Work from home and at home huh? <laughs> is different from, isn't it? That means, but then it's not taken into consideration at all because we, we cannot, uh, what do you call, uh, measure or we don't want to measure uh, women's or, or householders' uh, contribution. If you can put that in your, this one, it's different. So that is, uh, that is uh, a green GNP is that. That means you take into consideration the cost, social cost uh, uh, and all that. Gross national happiness is a very big issue. They're looking at dimensions of, uh, let's say, on uh, one of them is uh, good governance, uh, environment, okay, and happiness. All that you're taking into consideration. And they have a lot of, actually, they have four dimensions. And after that, they have also about almost, uh, almost, uh, if I'm mistaken, uh, about uh, 20 like that uh, sub indicators. Uh, Bhutan is the only country and yeah, they use gross national happiness. They are against gross national production. Okay, for them, a spiritual, one of them is spiritual. Spiritual environment, uh, gross national happiness and uh, happiness. These are the things they measure. They measure and uh, to, to denote their well-being, actually. The ultimate goal is well-being. So it is in line with, actually they are in line with, uh, they are the only country I think they are in line with holistic development in true sense. Uh. 
So their country, its average looks like poor, but they are poor in materially, but they are rich in other aspects. Isn't it? Uh, isn't it? Their, uh, example is happiness. They're happy. And environmental, very, very, very good. One of the cleanest air pollution is very, very low. Uh, very low, Bhutan. And they won't simply, uh, they do, do, won't simply allow tourists. Eh? No, eh? They don't allow. Eh? Very strict. So they don't, commercial, they don't allow commercialization there. Because when you allow tourism, it's a big commercial thing, isn't it? They don't allow. Because they know that will bring a lot of issues. They don't want. They're not interested. I myself have to apply and to get permission. Eh? Official, they allow. Lah. But simply cannot go in. You cannot go. There are a lot of money, I think, you have to, for tourism. Eh? So much. So they, they, they practically, they don't want to, you to, uh, you know, just simply go and tour. So that is on uh, gender empowerment uh, measurement. It's all on how women has actually uh, been empowered. Lah. Your empowerment, that means your capability. Actually, empowerment, they're referring to capability. How is being I've not done that measurement, but the concept I know. Uh, I've not done the measurement, but these are the index to indicate whether you are empowered, your capability at what level. So usually the gender is referring to women. Lah. Here they refer to women and they compare to men. Uh, that is one. Social impact assessment is on, of course, social well-being, our social well-being and all that. Environmental impact assessment, I think, is very clear. This one is quite, uh, we have this where we, we try to uh, take into uh, account of uh, pollution or various uh, aspects of pollution. We have uh, water, river pollution, water pollution. We have uh, noise pollution, okay, and uh, uh, air pollution, etc., etc. They take into all that. There's a way of calculating, actually. There's a way of uh, calculating of uh, this. And all this is actually, they're looking into... See, the moment you look into all this, eh, that means you're looking into, uh, you're taking into consideration of uh, environment, uh, pollution, uh, uh, what do you call, well-being of people, happiness, empowerment, equality, and uh, happiness, as I've said. When you took, take all this, you're all a human-centered, actually. We, 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 it takes you to a level of, uh, to achieve well-being. Because when you, when you take environment today, eh? noise pollution, uh, parking problem, I'm sure we all face that problem, okay? And traffic congestion, and uh, also uh, house affordability, rumah mampu milik, okay? Uh, all this housing and all that stuff. So all these, eh, if, if they can have... Measurement. The problem is we have the measurement, but we don't have the political will. That's another problem, Prof. Mm. We have, actually we have measurement. The measurements are good. They come out, they can come out with it. But do you have, next question that you should ask is, do we have political will to change? That's another level. That's another level. When uh, the new government took over, we have questioned that also in Penang. Of course, good. A lot of Good things they have done and all that. But in the name of development, still, we can see <laughs> mushrooming, apartment, flats, and all that. So again, but how do, you, do they define development? For them, development means this. You have apartment and all that, you're creating job. That's still economy. But what about parking, play, parking area? What about traffic congestion? See, all these are also, it affects our well-being, and that comes under social impact assessment. So measurement is there to, 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 as a guideline, as a yardstick to tell you what to be done and what not to be done. This measurement is for that. But we need political will to carry out. But that doesn't mean we should get discouraged. The struggle must go on. It may take 10 years, but it will materialize. That's my policy. You don't have to talk. Don't talk about problems. Problems are there because... Out there, there are so many variables to look to address. Out there, so many variables. Nature has got so many variables. Our one factor is a bit difficult. It takes some time, but the struggle must go on. It took many, many years. Eh? You see, it took many, many years for Obama to become a black president in the US. It took 300 years. Eh? Of all what American people say, US is democracy and all that, but it took 300 years. 
Why? For the acceptance. So Martin Luther and all that, the struggle uh, did not go with. It will take some time, of course, in nature, there's so many variables. Huh? So likewise, I'm trying to say here is, of course, don't get uh, pessimistic. We need to, these indexes are important, good benchmark. Even MPI, yeah, I used to criticize, you know, 2018-19, yeah, in my talks, conference, I used to criticize. We have the concept, but nothing. No measurement, nothing. 2000, it came out only when Pakatan Harapan came uh, in 2000, when Mahade, when Dr. Mahade came, in midterm review, yeah, they released first time. And before that, it was there, just a the concept. But they did not release the, 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 the figure, statistics. So it took some time to release. So we are not in the international global poverty thing, MPM and all that, because, because it'll, it'll go up. Okay, that's why there's a fear, I think. Okay, anyway, you got it? So this is all, so these are all human development indices. That means all these are related to uh, human development of holistic development. Before that, there was not holistic. It was more of economic development, contemporary, holistic, so these are the measurement to actually to, to measure holistic development actually. So there's a human-centered, huh? clear?